This is a very cool Meshtastic 3D printed case for the T-Beam, the LilyGo T-Beam. It's by a company in Texas called Spec5. I heard about it through the Digital Rancher, and today I'm going to put together a brand new T-Beam with the Meshtastic software that I've already flashed. We're going to put it in this case. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, this is the actual case here. It comes with, I actually bought two of them. I forgot I bought two of them, but I did. This is the T-Beam with the screen on it right here. This is the Spec 5 case, I should say. This is the Spec 5 case here. Again, huge shout out to Digital Rancher Rob over there. He has a video that I will link below. You can check that out. He brought this to, well, I don't remember where he brought it now. I saw it somewhere. I, he talked about it at Dayton, but I don't think he had it yet. Anyway, I got it. I got the idea of it from him. So this is a very well-made case, and I'll put the link to it in the description below as well. And it comes with uh, the hardware that you need right here. These these green pieces right here are the buttons for it. And then these screws, are the are they go around in all the four corners here. And it kind of comes with its own little carabiner. This is all the stuff it comes with right here. So let's put this together real quick, and we'll see what happens. This is a second T-Beam device that I had. I have a T-Beam device in my truck. I'm going to be doing a video about that soon. You want to make sure, one thing real quick, for those of you who are not into radio very much okay if you're into mesh tastic then great if you're not a ham you don't have your gmrs license whatnot okay you can damage the transmitting board on this uh, the transmitter on this board if you plug in your battery and this powers on and starts transmitting without this antenna connected so you want to make sure you have an antenna connect an antenna of some sort connected when you power the device up okay if this is not connected if there's no antenna it's possible you can damage this whole thing so just be aware of that okay so that's what i was looking i was looking at how i'm going to put this together and i think i'm going to do it like this kind of sit there like that this case here has a little lip around it right here where you can maybe see it and once you get it all put together, it won't be a big deal. You just got to make sure everything lines up before we start bolting things down. I should put the screws in first. Oh, I'm going to have to snip those off, I bet. Okay, what I had to do is these little solder joints, these, these solder pins were sticking up a little higher uh, than, than the case would allow. I just snipped them off. No big deal. The solder is still good. I tested it to make sure it still powers up. We're all good there. So... And then I did a little bit of experimenting with putting it here and there. So this part, this is the centerpiece between the bottom. The bottom piece here has this little insert. That's where your battery compartment goes, obviously. Really cool thing about this has a, a nice metal belt clip right there. And then it has a kickstand where you can sit it down like that in order to. And if the kickstand, it has a little magnet here that's there in the kickstand and there. So it kind of holds it closed because I do notice that it's kind of kind of tends to pop up if you don't push it shut all the way. But if you push it shut all the way, that magnet catches and that keeps it in place. So that's neat there, too. We've got four mount screws on the outside. And then on the inside of this, the four mount screws on the outside go here. They go through this board here into this board here from the top right here through this middle insert through here. But then inside of here, there are four more in, uh, mount screws inside of here. So if you look right here, we've got the the larger screws with the uh, with the nuts on the back of them. These are made for the four outside corners, and then you've got these little self-tapping screws right here, and those go down in the middle. So if you put your board in here correctly, like this, there we go. You have to put the little pins in the uh, the side pins in here first. These things are kind of small. So what I do, or what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this like this, there, there, and there. It kind of looks like I'm putting them in backwards, and perhaps I am. But if you put them on the outside, they're going to just fall out of the outside because there's no cover that goes around this. So these little push buttons here will be on the outside, and they're pretty easy to press. You just get them lined up correctly. And we put this in here like that, and then those line up correctly on that, and we will take and mount this part. Oops, now see, I lost one of the... Okay, so we're going to have to do it from the side. That's fine. Rob did tell me it was a little bit tricky to get this thing put together, but once you get it, it's, re it's a really nice case. So I'm going to put it like that, and I'm going to take these little screws. Okay, there's pre-drilled holes in the bottom of this black insert piece. 
you just got to line it up. It's a little bit dark in here, and I'm doing it sideways so that the side buttons don't fall out. But I got the first one in. So I should probably use a smaller screwdriver, but this is what I've got. And it does fit the head of the screw, so I'm okay. I'm good. Now it should hold those in pretty well because it's already started in the two corners there. Turn that that way. I don't want the board to flop around too much because it will fall out of here and, and it will lose those green buttons in there. It is, so I've got uh, one, see that there are silver screws, one, two, and three. Got the fourth one in here. All right, now that I've got them all started in there, I'll go ahead and tighten them down. Don't want to tighten them too tight. You don't want to strip out. It's just, it is just PLA plastic or whatever, you know, whatever uh, filament he used to print these is 3D printed material. It's not heavy duty, so just be aware of that. Just put them down all the way until you feel some resistance, until they're completely sunk into the and flush with the board, and then stop. Just like that. Okay, so I've got our three green buttons here. All three of those punch nicely. The T-Beam has a micro USB controller on it, in case you guys haven't seen one of these before. It's a micro USB charger. This will charge the internal 18650 battery, and you can run it from this. If you don't want to put a battery in here at all, then great, don't do that. Of course, I'm going to put a battery in mine so I can keep this around in my pocket. And then this is called an SMA connector. This is an SMA female because the, uh, the very center is, well, I'm not going to explain that to you guys. Y'all can figure that out. The center of the uh, SMA male is a pin, and the center of the female is not a pin. So call it what you want to, I guess. <laughs> and we're going to put this here. I want to put the antenna on because, like I said, I don't want to power it up. I don't want to put the battery in it and power it up without the antenna on it first. And peel the cover off the screen. Now this goes just, just this, this just sits over the top. It's fine right there. These, this stick still sticks up a little because of the pins right there. If, if you were to adjust the screen and maybe set it up higher on the pins, that might work a little bit better. For what I'm doing, I think this will be fine. It's not supposed to be waterproof or anything anyway. So the pins do stick up a little bit, but I don't think that I care about that. And then before we put this whole case together, I've got to put the battery in. That's why I put the antenna on right now. So let's do that real quick. I mentioned in one in another video I've got this 9900 milliamp hour 18650 battery is a lie. This thing is not 9900 milliamp hours. And my experience has been that those little 3000 uh, milliamp hour pillow batteries actually last longer than this. Partially due to the fact that the, these things are not rated properly. This is probably a two to 3000 milliamp hour battery in reality. Or po perhaps due to the fact that this uh, the T-Beam has GPS. So you're running GPS at the same time that you're running um, LoRa Mesh-tastic which unlike the unlike the Helltech doesn't have GPS. So the battery's gonna last longer since it's not running GPS. We've got a screen there, all good. Okay, antenna is on, no problem. I just noticed they, he gives you an extra self-tapping screw there. I got one in all four corners. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this here. We'll start them by hand at first. Make sure they go through all three divide, all three pieces here. Got a little wrench here with the proper fitting on the front of it. Again, you don't have to monster wrench these things down. So just make sure they get nice and snug and stop, uh, stop cranking on them because you don't want to crack or break anything. Now we've got all four screws in, all four, um, four corners there. The buttons are working. This is, uh, and I like the fact that uh, it's got indicators on the case for what the buttons do. That's IO38. I think that just means you scroll through there. There we go. Just like that. This is reset. So that basically reboots it, and then you can power it off with this one. That's pretty good right there. And again, you can set it like that with the little kickstand that's on the back of it, just like that. You can set it down like that, or you can, I guess you can set it like that, and put the antenna up. By the way, for those of you who aren't really familiar with radio, you're gonna get better results with a with a 900 megahertz LoRa Mesh-tastic signal. You're gonna get better results when the antenna is pointed up. That's why this antenna bends. This is the antenna that came with the T-Beam. It bends like that, so you can set it down like that and still have the antenna pointing up. You can set it down like this and still have the antenna pointing up. And then when you're, 
if you're carrying it on a belt clip like that, you can twist this and set it like that. So if you're setting it down on the desk or on a flat area surface like that, it's best to have the antenna pointed up like that. You'll get better results and longer range and better polarization with that. So that's just something that you learn in radio class. But there it is right there. It's Spec 5. This thing is really cool. This is the best looking case and the best and the most functional case, the best options case for the T-Beam, the Lilligo T-Beam that I have seen yet. If you guys have something that you like just as well or something that you might like better, put a comment below. I'd love to know what it is. I'm going to hook this up and this is going to be my daily carry. I've been using that Heltec V3 that we all built together at Dayton Hamvention. I've, I've got one of those. Uh, Josh 3D printed a case for me and I've been carrying that around that one around town just to kind of see what I pick up around town, which has been hardly anything at all. I do have Meshtastic running 100% of the time in my truck, and I'm going to do another video about that soon. But I'm going to trade out my everyday one that I carry in my pocket for this one because I like this uh, belt clip that's on it. I like the adjustable antenna, and uh, it's just a really neat-looking case. So check out the description in the link below for both the LilyGo T-Beam and for this Spec 5 case, 73 to all.